In terms of the management of post-transplant complications uh, through the lens of Hodgkin lymphoma, we're usually talking about autologous transplant. We had done more allogeneic transplants in the past, but it really is few and far between, partly because uh, salvage therapies are more effective in terms of antibody drug conjugate, checkpoint inhibitors, and other novel targeted agents that are coming through the pipeline. So in terms of autologous transplants, well, it, it really is not different than other uh, autologous transplants, I would say, whether non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, et cetera, meaning um, age of patient is important consideration. Are they heavily pretreated or not? Uh, other comorbidities, et cetera. Usually uh, we'll use a beam-based uh, conditioning regimen for autologous transplants. Most patients, especially the younger patients, are able to toler tolerate that quite decently, are usually discharged somewhere between days 10 and 13 after reinfusion of their autologous stem cells. Of course, they'll need to be followed in the outpatient clinic closely. Um, we don't typically see significant uh, post-discharge complications, although, of course, in a COVID world, we have extra precaution in terms of uh, infectious issues that uh, we have to monitor for. Usually, blood counts recover nicely and in a good, stable trajectory. Uh, the additional consideration after they recover from their transplant for certain higher risk patients, we will think about maintenance therapy, especially if they are treatment naive with brentuximab adotin. That's vis-a-vis -vis the Athera randomized trial, and that is FDA approved as one year of maintenance. Brentuximab adotin, post autologous transplant for particular high risk patients. So we are considering that for, for that patient population. Now, it sometimes comes up, what about the patient who is has had prior and possibly failed prior brentuximab adotin treatment? There are uh, published data, although it's not approved yet, in terms of checkpoint inhibitor as maintenance therapy after transplant. So on a case-by-case -case basis, we will consider that as well. The only other point of uh, caution I would bring up is we've seen a little bit, and this is arguably anecdotal, of patients who had checkpoint inhibitor therapy um, as part of their salvage regimen. Sometime we'll, we'll see almost a febrile um, syndrome, engraftment syndrome with a rash, et cetera, sometimes as part of their transplant or just as their cells are engrafting. So that's just another uh, really small nuance to be aware of.